Hi, thanks for checking out this video. We're going to be looking at the Flutter speed dial dependency today. This allows us to have a fab button with multiple smaller fab buttons. You may have seen this pattern before, and we'll get started by, of course, adding the Flutter underscore speed underscore dial dependency to our pubspec.yaml. At this stage, you'll have to either run Flutter pub get inside of the terminal or simply save the file if you have the VS Code Flutter plugins. You may be interested in my VS Code Flutter plugins videos. I give some examples of some great plugins to get when using Flutter here on the channel. So check that one out. We're then gonna head over to, of course, our home.dart. This is simply a scaffold with an app bar and a centered container with some text inside. So nothing crazy at this stage. We're then, as always, going to add a floating action button. So let's do that right there. And inside of that, we want a speed dial. So we will need to import that from the package itself. You can either hit command period on the speed dial with the red underline, or you can let that auto complete itself. And that should import that here at the top. So when you have that, we then want to add some children. The children is an array of speed dial child. We won't have to import that because we already have that with the Flutter speed dial plugin. The speed dial child is similar to a standard fab button. So we'll have a child with an icon of icons dot, and I'm going to select any icon at this stage. We'll give this a label to, I'm going to call this first item. We'll also give this an on tap because obviously when we tap the speed dial child itself, we want something to happen. So we'll simply print out to the console first. When we save the file, we can see we now have this fab button. When we click the fab button, we have this little AC unit here saying first item. Next up, we're gonna look at how we can create an animated icon for this fab button. So inside of this speed dial right here, we'll add an animated icon. And this takes an animated icon data. So we can say animated icon. And as you can see, we have a variety of different things here. We'll use the animated icons dot, and that gives us back that animated icon data and we'll say menu close. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So now we have this menu button, and when we select it, we have the close button. We can change that to be whatever we want from this animated icons. So this could be anything such as list view and so on, but it wouldn't really make sense in this circumstance. So let's put it back to the menu close for now. We're then gonna add another speed dial child to this children. We'll call this one second item. We'll print second and we'll stick a different icon such as accessibility new. Now, when we select this, we can see we have second item and first item. And if we pull up the terminal and we look at the debug console and we select the first item, we can see first. Same goes for the second item. And we can also change things like the background color. So we might want to say colors don't yellow. And when we select the fab button now, we now have a yellow fab button here at the first location and a blue for the second. We can continue to customize this, for example, with the background color of colors.red. And when we change that, our initial fab button now does turn red. What if, for example, when we click an item, we don't want to close the fab button menu? Well, we can add the close manually equal to true. So we select this now and we select first item. And we can see inside of the console that it is logging out first, but the menu itself is not disappearing. This could be something that you want. I don't really see this pattern very often, but you may find it useful. If we didn't want an animated icon, we can remove that and have a child of icon, icons dot. And then if we selected anything such as account box, we would see that when we select that, we no longer have that animated icon. So it really just depends on what you want and you can theme this however you want. We can also do things like on open and this will give us a function that returns whenever this is opened. So print opening. We also have an on close, which we can do the same, print closing. So if we take a look at our fab button, we can select it. We see that we have opening now. And if we select it once more, we have a closing. If we turn off a close manually, so we set that to false, we now notice that when we select this, we have an overlay. We can change the color of that overlay if we want. So we have overlay color, 
of colors dot and perhaps we'll say amber when we select that we can now see that we have this amber overlay and we can also change the opacity of that too so overlay opacity equal to 0 0.2 this will make it very slightly visible but we can see that it is still amber so you can change the overlay too if you want there are a few other things that you can change but this essentially is the basis of how to customize the speed dial. One final thing that I do actually want to show before we go is the curve. This is the animation curve that happens when we select the fab buttons. So we can say curves dot, and you can see we have a variety of different things. Let's add this to be bounce in. So when we select bounce in, we can now see that the item is bounce in, and we can change that to be something different. Let's try perhaps ease in. So when we select this now, the items ease in. So this changes the animation curve of the speed dial fab itself. So that's pretty much everything for the speed dial. I hope you found this very useful. If you have, let me know what you think inside of the comments section below, and I'll see you very soon in my next video.